In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. Well, good morning to you all. Welcome to our Eucharist today. Welcome to those joining us online as well. Today in the church's calendar, we give thanks for Blandina and her companions, martyrs in the early years of the Christian church. Among the early persecutions of Christians, that at Lyon and Vienne stands out, partly because an account of it was written by survivors in a letter to the churches in Asia and Phrygia. The Christians were first excluded from any public place, then seized by the mob and imprisoned on charges of incest and cannibalism. They were tortured and sentenced to death in the arena, or for those who were Roman citizens by beheading. Bishop Pothinus, over 90 years old, was brutally beaten and died of his wounds. Blandina was a young slave girl who proclaimed under torture, I am a Christian and we do nothing vile. She was thrown to the wild beasts and after a lengthy ordeal was gored to death by a bull. The bodies of the martyrs who died on this day in the year 177 were burnt and the ashes thrown into the river Rhone so that no relics should remain. In all, the names are known of 48 of these Christians who suffered such tribulation and fury as witnesses to their faith in Christ. And so today we give thanks for Blandina and her companions who gave their lives for the faith. And we offer this Mass particularly in thanksgiving for all the martyrs who down the ages have witnessed to Christ in that incredible and brave manner. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The saints were faithful unto death and now dwell in the heavenly kingdom forever. As we celebrate their joy, let us bring to the Lord our sins and weaknesses and ask for his mercy. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who strengthened Blandina and her companions as they endured so many and so great sufferings, Grant that, following their example, we may all be truly Christian, allowing nothing vile to be done among us, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. With much grief and anguish of heart, I wept, and with groaning began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You judge the world. And now, O Lord, remember me, and look favourably upon me. Do not punish me for my sins, 
and for my unwitting offences, and those that my ancestors committed before you, they sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments. So you gave us over to plunder, exile and death, to become the talk, the byword, an object of reproach among all the nations among whom you have dispersed us. And now your many judgments are true in exacting penalty from me for my sins. <clears throat> for we have not kept your commandments and have not walked in accordance with truth before you. So now deal with me as you will. Command my spirit to be taken from me so that I may be released from the face of the earth and become dust. For it is better for me to die than to live because I have had to listen to undeserved insults and great is the sorrow within me. Command, O Lord, that I be released from this distress. Release me to go to the eternal home. And do not, O Lord, turn your face away from me. For it is better for me to die than to see so much distress in my life and to listen to insults. On the same day, at Ekbatana in Media, it also happened that Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, was reproached by one of her father's maids. For she had been married to seven husbands, and the wicked demon Asmodeus had killed each of them before they had been with her, as is customary for wives. So the maid said to her, You are the one who kills your husbands. See, you have already been married to seven husbands, and have not borne the name of a single one of them. Why do you beat us? Because your husbands are dead? Go with them. May we never see a son or daughter of yours. On that day she was grieved in spirit and wept. When she had gone up to her father's upper room, she intended to hang herself. But she thought it over and said, Never shall they reproach my father, saying to him, You had only one beloved daughter but she hanged herself because of her distress. And I shall bring my father in his old age down in sorrow to Hades. It is better for me not to hang myself, but to pray the Lord that I may die and not listen to these reproaches any more. At that same time, with hands outstretched towards the window, she prayed and said, Blessed are you, merciful God. Blessed is your name for ever. Let all your works praise you for ever. At that very moment, the prayers of both of them were heard in the glorious presence of God. So Raphael was sent to heal both of them. Tobit, by removing the white films from his eyes, so that he might see God's light with his eyes. And Sarah, daughter of Raguel, by giving her in marriage to Tobias, son of Tobit, and by setting her free from the wicked demon Asmodeus. For Tobias was entitled to have her before all others who had desired to marry her. At the same time that Tobit returned from the courtyard into his house, Sarah, daughter of Raguel, came down from her upper room. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is... To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, for you have I hoped all the day long. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. 
To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right, and teach his way to the lowly. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. The Lord be with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Mark. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first married, and when he died, left no children. And the second married her and died, leaving no children. And the third likewise. None of the seven left children. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you are wrong? that you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God not of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, I hope you weren't feeling too cheerful this morning when you um, arrived, because I've done my best, at least, to depress you in various ways. Firstly, with the lovely story of Blandina and her companions being tortured uh, in all various different ways and then executed for the faith back in the year 177. And then our first reading today uh, from the book of Tobit, which is from the Apocrypha in the Bible, that bit in between the Old Testament and the New Testament, which we don't hear read very often. Perhaps there's a reason for that. It is a bit of a shame we don't hear the Apocrypha so often, because there are some great stories in there that can teach us a thing or two. But the passage we heard today, again, was quite depressing in a way. We have the two characters, and I'll say a word about them in a moment, Tobit and then Sarah, both praying that, basically, they might die because of the troubles that they are facing. So it's all a little bit depressing. But I will be able to extract a note of positivity, hopefully, by the end of this uh, short homily. But a little background first about why Tobit was in the situation he was in. The beginning of the book of Tobit, we read that he is blinded in a rather bizarre way by having uh, sparrow's droppings fall into his eyes. Now, how did this happen, you might ask? Good question. Well, Tobit was a righteous Jew and wanted to invite a poor person to feast with him at a Jewish festival and discovered that, in actual fact, a Jewish person had been murdered in his city. So being a good person, Tobit decided to go and give this chap a decent burial. But, of course, touching a dead body uh, for the Jewish people makes you unclean. So Tobit had to sleep outside all night long in order to take away the uncleanness. And this is when the incident happened with the sparrows and he was blinded for four years. And he becomes destitute because he can't work and he's in a terrible situation. And this is what leads him to this prayer of desperation where he asks God basically to end it all for him. Secondly, we have uh, Sarah, who we're told has had seven husbands. Each of them has been killed by the wicked demon Asmodeus. 
But her maids, Sarah's maids, are taunting her, saying that she has in fact killed all these seven husbands, and she can't take it anymore, and she pray prays the same prayer. So as I say, it's all a bit gloomy and all a bit depressing, but what I think is interesting is that both of these people, Tobit and Sarah, despite the terrible situation they find themselves in, despite the despair that they're feeling, still turn to God in prayer. Now, yes, they're praying that God might end their life, but still, their first thought is to seek refuge in God in prayer. And we could have a whole topic, I'm sure, on what prayer is, but in part, prayer surely is what we see going on here with Tobit and Sarah. Prayer is about opening ourselves to God, about pouring our heart out to God, about being honest to God, about telling God what is really on our heart and on our soul. Prayer is not just pious platitudes that we think God wants to hear. God actually wants to hear the raw truth, even if it's very difficult. And we often hear that in the Psalms, don't we? The psalmist pouring out his or her soul, sometimes being angry with God, sometimes expressing despair. And I'm sure there are many people in our world today who pray prayers just like this. But at least they're praying. At least they believe that God is there and God is wanting to listen to them. And we hear at the end of the passage, I told you this is where we get a note of positivity, because we're told that their prayers are heard by God in heaven and he sends the archangel Raphael. And we're told that Tobit is healed of his blindness and Sarah is given a husband and is set free from the wicked demon Asmodeus. And as it happens, the husband Sarah finds is Tobit's son, so their two stories come together. But the interesting point here is, of course, God answered their prayer, but not in the way they wanted. They both prayed for death, but God instead gave them healing. And that surely is true, isn't it? That oftentimes our prayers are answered, but not necessarily in the way that we would like or the way that we would expect. And this is another curious thing about prayer. When sometimes we pray and we don't seem to get an answer, we wonder, is God listening? Is God really there? But oftentimes God hears our prayers and answers them in a different way, in an unexpected way. And there's also hope, too, in our gospel reading today, where Jesus is confronting the Sadducees who don't believe in the resurrection. And Jesus is trying to convince them that, yes, there is a resurrection, that there is eternal life. And in that funny dispute about how many husbands will a woman have in the afterlife if she's been married several times, Jesus says the next life will be totally different to this life, be totally beyond our imagination, but that there will be an afterlife Jesus is sure of from the Old Testament and then of course Jesus' own life, death and resurrection points us forward to that promise which is in store for all of us, the promise of eternal life which can give us hope and encouragement and consolation even in our most difficult times. Amen. Gwedhiwn, let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks today for the life and witness of Saint Blandina and her companions, for their bravery and courage in giving their lives for the faith. We give thanks for all those who have become martyrs for your sake down the centuries. We pray for your church in every land, and especially today for the Diocese of Cape Coast in Ghana, West Africa, for their Bishop Victor and the clergy and people. We pray for June, our Bishop, and everyone in this diocese. 
And today, especially, we are asked to pray for the Community Development Officer, Jonathan Durley. We ask God's blessing upon his work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for peace among the nations. We hold before you, Lord, those places in our world where there is conflict and violence and warfare. We pray that peace and reconciliation may come. And pray for all who work to bring about peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own parish and all its people. Today, especially praying for all those who live in Hill Nant and Hill Atoyne. We also pray for those who are ill or in any kind of need. And we remember particularly today Andrew Clark as he prepares to undergo surgery this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in this life, all those whom we have known and loved and now remember. We pray for all who have died recently and among them Arthur Richards. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We are all citizens with the saints and belong to the family of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who are far away and to those who are near. Tang never the rargloi the vuga de hui bobapsar. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Lord, be pleased to accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Strengthened by your grace, your martyrs, Blandina and her companions triumphed over suffering, laying down their life in faithful witness to Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise, and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
as our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. Grant that these gifts of your body and blood may cleanse me from my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful always to your teaching and let me never be parted from you. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.